Hello, so I've had a parcel from Bulgaria, so let's have a look at what's inside. Well, first of all, this little knife that I did the other day to review on, that actually did open the packaging really easily, so that was good. So right, let's look at what's in here. Shake it out slightly, because I'm trying to do it one-handed for the camera. Right, so here's our main little satchel. So some of you will probably already guess what this is with this satchel. Yep, it's a Geiger counter. Um, so what we've got in here, I guess, is a load of leads for it, probably the headphones and everything. The little wand uh, holder, so you can do it along the ground. Whatever this thing is, I guess maybe a flathead screwdriver. It's kind of cool, but very big handle for a little tiny screwdriver. I think that is a screwdriver. And, ah, I guess this is a battery adapter type thing, like the 12 volt ones that the Soviets had that you could run them off a car. Because I think this is their equivalent, essentially, of the DP2. Now, there might be something in here that's quite interesting. So what I'm going to do is, if that's in here, I'm going to safely put that away before uh, we go any further. And yes, I believe it might be that bit. So, yes, right. I'm just going to, before I do anything else, if that actually might be attached to that properly, but I'm just going to get um, another Geiger counter and just give that a little see what's uh, in there. Right, I've got the Radio Code 101, which should pick up beta radiation. So let's fold that lid back. And not picking much up from there. So it's either got very good shielding or it's not actually a very active source. But then, yeah, there's definitely a source there. Again, not, not a really scary and strontium-90 source, but yeah, that will be strontium-90. So I'm just going to leave that sealed over, knowing that that's not actually... Um, particularly a scary source. Let's just have a look at what it says that actually is in um, measurements. If I can remember the uh, button press to do that. There we go, micro -ronkins. That is, oh, I've muted it. But yeah, it's it's a low it's a low energy source anyway. It's probably only a couple of milli ronkgen per hour sort of thing just to check this meter works. So anyway, let's uh let's see if I can put some batteries in the meter and let's see if it still works. Now, interestingly, looking at these battery sockets, I have absolutely no clue um what kind of batteries this would have taken. So I'm gonna probably have to power it via its little twelve volt thing. So I guess this would probably have been two somehow six volt little square batteries. But thankfully, as this has been included, um, all I'm going to do is wire this up to a variable power supply. Yeah, 6 volt by the look of it. Um, or was that 9 volt? But whatever. Let's wire this up. I'll put it on um, a power, sort of uh, my bench power supply. And we'll see if we can get this talking. Now, I believe I've probably connected the terminals up correctly. I didn't end up using that, but I might go back to it. I was just figuring out first where the terminals are, because I've got a light that will go dimmer or brighter, depending on how I turn this lever. So I believe that's setting the vol um, voltage somehow, but on the lowest range at the moment, I'm yet to see the needle move. I think when it's probably on that second setting, if it's like the Soviet counters, that one, so this one, will be where you probably want to try and get that V to go. So I'm assuming you adjust the voltage when it's on this mode somehow to get the V to there. So I'll have to do a bit more playing about and then see if I can get that doing something. I might go back to that and set it to exactly 12 volts and I'm getting the voltage right. Well, after fiddling with the voltage a bit between 6 and 12 volts, um, the light went quite bright and I assume it's now blown. So that might have been an old fuse going with that bulb. Uh, so what I'm just going to do now is open it up so you can see the insides of it. Probably won't get this working today. Uh, don't know even if this was advertised as a working Geiger counter. But um, yeah, it seems quite a cool unit anyway. Like I said, surprisingly well made. No, no offence to Bulgarians, but you know, communist Bulgaria wasn't exactly known as the cutting edge of um, the USSR sort of block, commie block. This unit seems quite nice. So um, as I said, it'd be good if I can get it working. Um, also, like I said, nice, it came with a Strontium 90 kit. I actually prefer the headphone plug a lot on this one compared to the um, older Soviet ones. This is just literally a lot closer to a 3.5mm jack. But yeah, so what I'm just going to do now is open up the insides of it and we'll see what the insides look like. Well, I'm a bit perplexed how this comes apart. That little bit there, if you remove it, is just a little plexiglass shield over the um, sort of top bit. 
But looking at the bottom, where I've removed all the screws. Uh, I don't think that's a little screw there, and if it is, it's not going to hold much in. I think that's just, again, one of the bits for the positive negative of the circuit. You'd think with all the screws removed from there, this would, bottom bit would pull out from the top. Uh, as in, you know, like this is uh, physically held on like that. But even using pliers and putting quite a bit of force on it, I can't pull it out. And I don't want to damage it too much because you can see there the metal's buckled a bit under the force of trying to pull the top out the bottom. So yeah, it, it looks like an interesting counter if I could get it to work. Um, an interesting relic of the Cold War. I'm st I still don't mind buying something like this because it's still interesting to have around. Uh, I'm sure at some point I can get it actually going. But yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. So um, came with some goofy giant headphones I like. The Probe, I haven't actually looked at what the tubes are in the Probe yet, but I imagine they're SBM 20s like any Soviet thing. We'll have a quick look at that now. Yes, the Probe is pretty much identical to a DP5. You've got your uh, SBM 20 there for your lower radiation range. And for your higher radiation range, you have what, some SI3BG or something like that it's called. I can't remember its exact name, but that's the tube that does the sort of 200 Ronkman per hour range. So yeah, Probe is very much a DP5. So like I said, this is basically a DP5 just made by Bulgaria. And I actually really like the look of it. Um, it's a very cool looking unit. It's just, yeah, shame, like I said, this one didn't seem to be working off the bat. Because, yeah, when I got it actually powering on, uh, the needle wouldn't move at all, you know, on any of the settings. And then um, I'm assuming that that fuse eventually blew. I didn't put it above 12 volts because obviously I think it's pretty sure because it says 12 volts on the switcher. That's what it will max out at. But on 6 volts, you know, it was doing nothing no matter how I moved the dials. And as I slowly went up to 12 volts, it was the light was on, you know, and then all of a sudden it just went off. So um, I think this is just a case of replacing a fuse in it again and having a look. But there might be some more sort of corrosion inside or something that's stopping bits running. But... Weirdly, with the PP51A, which I guess is the name of this Geiger counter, is I have no clue how I'm meant to remove this bottom plate. It might just be that it's wedged in and sealed so tight that, um, you know, it's going to be a hell of a job to get it out. But anyway, I'll put the video on like this, and then you lot can enjoy this. And I do have some Bulgarian viewers, not that many, but some. So some of you might be able to shed some more light on this. But yeah, the Etsy seller sent it very quickly and packaged it efficiently and everything. And yeah. So this is the Bulgarian equivalent of a DP5, I imagine. Well, just a little update. Good news, I've got the meter sort of working. And I think the only thing that doesn't work is that screen, the ammeter. So hopefully you'll be able to hear this. Not sure um, how audible that will be. Yeah, hopefully if you can hear that, um, basically it's actually ticking away when you put it near a check saw, so the Geiger count of it's working, it's just whatever reason that screen's not working. So um, yeah, it might just be a busted ammeter in there and everything else is actually running fine. So yeah, the bulbs themselves act as the fuses, so there's the dead bulb there. I'm running it on 9 volts at the moment. And that seems pretty happy, that is just like basically a voltage power adjuster, depending on what you've got battery wise plugged into it so yeah this seems to run between 6 and 12 volts but yeah it's a cool little unit it is basically just a dp5 um but yeah i'll have to see eventually if i can get that running um because normally i've not seen a meters bust to the point where the needle doesn't move normally when a meters go wrong um it's just the needle drift is crazy you know like they just you know go from one end to the other but yeah so there you go the bulgarian version of a dp5 i've actually got it sort of working